and welcome to Theory Craft. I'm Ben. Over there is my co-host Jack, accompanied by two furry little guys, Boris on the left and Minogi on the right. Good day, fellas and Sheilas. Welcome, scum, to this cesspool of incompetence. Yeah, couldn't have put it any better myself, Boris. <laughs> and today's incompetency is a dumpster fire of the movie. It's the only YouTube-friendly YouTube phrase I can think of of how glorifyingly bad this movie is. Masters of the Universe. That's back in nonsense. Yeah, back in 1987, Hollywood decided that, you know what? It's been seven years, but we'll give it a try to re create our own rendition of a comic book slash childhood series that many beloved, like Flash Gordon, so we'll make He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. However, and it's a big however, they don't really call it He-Man the Masters of the Universe. It's just simply put Masters of the Universe. I came across this movie by absolute sheer fluke. It was on TV one night earlier on this month. I thought, why not give it a try? And I've been trying to sterilize my brain ever since. <laughs> I could barely just I could barely muster just sitting through mere clips of the thing. You you don't need to watch the film. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> you don't, no. Like the thing is though even though there is notable cast members within this movie, I'm surprised it didn't kill their career. Like there's like there's movies like this that are so god awful it could ruin someone's career for good, and yet somehow it's barely affected them. And I'm trying to figure out how they saved a career from it. Pure bloody luck, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean. The only thing I will say is that they did cast the correct guy to play He-Man, Dolph Lud Lundgren, I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but he is the guy that was the Russian that Rocky faced in Rocky 1 or 3, I don't know, there's too many of them, but he's done a lot of big birdie, like, blokey type movies because it was him and Arnie, the both european big bodybuilder type guys that were the muscle bound guys of every movie in the 80s yeah who for the life of them couldn't really come across very well for the rest of them in america but yet they seem to be very very good actors despite the movies oh yeah but how the hell she managed to get a career in friends after this courtney cox of all people Courtney Cox is in this movie. I did not even notice. <laughs> I didn't realise. I was going through it for, I recognise her, but who the hell is it? I was going through the cast. Courtney Cox. Like, what? I didn't even notice. <laughs> well, she plays Julie Winston, is one of the like main Earth people that He-Man comes across and saves the day, and her character was just abysmal. Like... We've said time and time again that to Twilight is probably the ultimate trashy movie of our decade, if not our century so far, because the female lead is just utter nonsense. Like, she is, woe is me. <sighs> well, I'm afraid Courtney Cox seems to have pulled the rabbit out of the hat on this and seemed to outdo it on this movie. Yeah. But, oh my Christ, like... It, the thing is with this movie is that it spends probably 30% give or take of the entire movie on Eternia, which is where He-Man is actually originated from. But the thing is, like, the rest of the movie, it's just coincidentally on Earth just for the sheer plot of it. There is no technical reason behind it, but it's just literally... They are there for the sake of being there. Because plot logic is that the cosmic key, this ungodly powerful key, lands on Earth, and so do He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. But, oh my Christ, like, I don't know where to begin where it all fell apart. 
What do I you mean, mean where it all fell apart? It fell apart when the movie started. Well, to be fair, the movie began with a great premise that there was this epic battle inside Castle Grayskull. But you never see Castle Grayskull. You just see the insides of it, which I swear is just dressed up like bits from Flash Gordon. I swear it is the throne room that Ming what the Merciless had. What did you call it? The recycled, recycled movie set from Flash Gordon? Pretty much. Like, I just... Oh, God almighty. I mean, let's have a look. We've got some reference images to go through. Uh, right. So the first one I wanted to go over, okay? Let's start off with how the cartoon series came across back in the early 70s, okay? Like, obviously, it's a, car a kid's cartoon show from back then. It's going to be a bit of an iffy one, to a degree. But this is... How it's meant to be, obviously. You've got He-Man in the middle. You've got his yep. like people on the right-hand side. You've got Skeletor. Evil Lin, which I, I find is such a pathetic name for a, a henchman because it's just basically Evelyn, but Evil Lin. Like, <laughs> like Evil really, there was no attempt at all. And then you got, I think in that bottom left hand corner is meant to be Beast Man, but I'm not fully clued up on who's who within this series. I only know it exists because it is a cult classic. They tried rebooting it in 2002 and flopped. Probably because it flopped from the 80s movie as well, but that's beside the point. Yeah. But one other thing that I've got as a reference image, okay? So, here in the UK, there is a company called M Money Supermarket, which basically they look into... You give them details of things that you want better deals on, and they use random mascots and things. Once upon a time, I believe it was early, what, 2010, give or take, we had, for whatever reason, a version of He-Man and Skeletor as the like mascots for the adverts yeah there we go somehow this as a spoof thing looks better than the 1980s interpretation of well, e-man better than what we got back in 1987 yes like this is skeletor in 1987 just a really rubbish latex mask <laughs> It's not even that. I mean, I sent it to Jack in a message, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'll be flagged or something for all this joke. But I said to Jack, I didn't realise Michael Jackson was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just when he was still recovering from the surgery. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh my good god! Like, I wonder if this is where J.K. Rowling got the inspiration for Voldemort. It's quite the, possible. I mean, no nose. Well, there's no nose. There's quite a very white, pale face. And, like, he... It's just... Oh, God, it's just such a bizarre movie. I mean... The thing is, like, the whole thing within the movie was that it opens up and Skeletor's taking hold of Castle Grayskull by surprise! And is taking the power of the universe. Okay. How did he get in? How could we not know that he snuck into the castle? We have the ultimate defences. And then he has this thing called the Cosmic Key. Which basically was commissioned via this weird obscure creature thing. That's a cross between a hobgoblin and a dwarf, I think. I don't know. But... Ooh, I think we may be having some technical difficulties. Hello, and welcome to Theory Craft. I'm Ben. Over there is my co-host Jack with his furry entourage, Minogi on the left and Boris Johnson on the right. 
We are two dudes and two furry little creatures that love to rant, rave, and ramble all things comic books, sci fi, TV shows, or even just movies gone by. We tried this chat the other day, but Twitch decided to have a bit more of a meltdown than usual, so we're retrying today. I will obviously edit this to a degree for YouTube, so for anyone who's watching us on YouTube and thinking, what the hell's going on? Has Ben gone loopy? The answer is yes. It was about 20 years ago, but that's beside the point. <laughs> but yes, today we are continuing our chat that we tried on Easter Monday, or was it Easter Sunday that we had uh, it? It was on the Sunday, I think. Yes. We were basically trying to grab our heads around the horrifyingly bad live-action adaptation of He-Man, only known by the name of Masters of the Universe, because I think they didn't want to associate it with He-Man for it being such an utter failure. Oh, yes. I mean, don't get me wrong, okay? Like, it was the 80s, it was 1987... Although they didn't have much in the way of special effects, it felt like they crowned every little bit of special effects they could in one like part of the movie, and then the rest like, oh shoot, we've overspent. What do you mean, these special effects that they could actually afford? <laughs> Pretty much. Like the thing that I love most of all is that obviously the main thing with he man is that he gains his power via something called Castle Grey Skull, which is obviously a skull that's a castle, like this ginormous shaped castle that's a skull yeah. shape as well. But we never see that in the entirety of the movie. It's just literally one random room within this entire castle that's an omniversal powerhouse. And if anything, it feels like it's scrapped parts from a set from either Star Wars or maybe Flash Gordon because there didn't seem an awful lot of effort put into it other than it was just a very or it just polished... like a redress set from the Wizard of Oz from the throne scene. <laughs> it probably was. Like, it looks it very could... similar. <laughs> but this is what I just don't get is like they spent so much effort into making that one particular thing look amazing and then the rest of the movie just fell apart like the main plot within the movie okay is that the reason how Skeletor came about getting inside the castle was that he basically forced one of these creatures on Eternia to smith him a cosmic key which allows the user to open up a portal to anywhere within the universe and for some bizarre reason, any when. So it can time travel as well as space travel. But the logic is, is that the guy's already made one, right? Yes. And then by sheer plot logic, the guy has a spare one just lying about, which they use to go to Earth. Because plot logic. Yeah, but the plot logic is even more thin than a paper house. Like... The fact that the bad guy's already got one version, and he's hunting down the good guys because they've got a version as well. What difference does it make if they have one or not? Because the entire premise behind the movie is that they have to fix the key to get back to where they came from to defeat Skeletor, which is kind of ironic when he uses the key itself to send his army to Earth to go and get the good guys so then he can beat them to a pulp in Castle Grayskull. So why didn't they just watch and wait for him to come and find them? Because it would have been a short film. <laughs> well, I mean, it, the thing is, like, there's this movie just doesn't know what it wants to do. Like, it's trying to be wholesome. It's trying to be traumatic. It's trying to appease to the idea of childhood memories for those who watch He-Man back in the day. But it just doesn't well, translate. I say, the, act, like, the actor which they had for actual uh, He-Man, I think, well, like you said, was a, like, kind of a pretty good fit, but my God, he, they could have spent a bit more money on a better costume. He must have been bloody freezing in that thing. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like, <sighs> He-Man itself is a very 
dodgy t- style choice in terms of costume. Like it is basically something you'd find akin to something a bit more of an adult themed sort of fiasco. But the irony is, is that He Man is the persona of Castle Grayskull's guard, which is therefore embodied by Prince Adam, the rightful heir to Eternia. Yeah. But the entirety of this movie has no show of Prince Adam. It is literally just the poor actor in the leather outfit as He Man throughout the entire movie. For whatever bizarre reason, he has random bits of armor on his shoulder blades, which then randomly disappear partway through the movie. Because part then, of continuity, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, if he's going to have armor, why is it not covering everything? But more to the point is that the sword is meant to be able to protect him from any weapon regardless, because it's like this all-powerful weapon. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> then it nullifies the point of the armor in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> There's so many things that I cannot get around with this movie. Like, when you get the kids that come across the cosmic key, that in itself is probably the point in which I think the writers realise, screw this, I'm not getting paid enough to deal with this movie and just write in any old crap. Because, like... They don't explain much as to what Courtney characters is, apart from the fact that she's just heartbroken that the year before her parents died in a plane crash. But what does it add to the movie other than just random dribble towards the end of the movie that she prevents it some... Actually, we don't have confirmation that she prevents it from happening. It's just that she stops them from going on that day... But for all we know, things could happen. They could still end up on the plane crash. Anyway. <sighs> yeah. I don't get it. Oh, I, I don't get it. <laughs> but I think the one character that miffs me off throughout the entire movie is Ludwig, the cop, the like detective or the sergeant. I don't know. I think he's like Sergeant Ludwig or something. He's this arrogant piece of crap who throughout the entire movie cannot just... Dis- He's got more flipping of size than a schizophrenic with a two-headed coin. <laughs> like, one minute he's on, like, the kid's side, the next minute he's against He-Man because he thinks he's the bad guy, then he's yeah. against the bad guys, but then he somehow goes against He-Man again because he thinks that He-Man's the reason for the bad guys. By the end of the movie, I think there's at least three or four scenes in which he was meant to be in, which just got chopped out, which makes no sense to the ending of the movie, where he just basically makes himself at home at Castle Grayskull, gets given a robe, basically starts loving it up with the Empress in Castle Grayskull, and just goes, you know what? I'll just stay here. And it's just like, why? (laughs) Like, You've literally met these people in the space of probably an hour, give or take. You have no idea what this planet is like. For all you know, you could get eaten alive by any of the wildlife, which he could. But <laughs> it's just the fact that he just found himself quite a cushy place and just went, ah, sod this. And that was it. Yeah, probably the pinnacle of lazy writing for this film. So lazy. I think the premise was that he was meant to be a cop on the cusp of being retired, but obviously, as all tropes within American movies where the cop is being retired, it basically means that he's being kicked out, he's not getting paid enough to be retired, so he's trying to find a different means of living it up in a better way, so he just basically goes to another planet, as you do. As you do. But the one thing that I wish they could have at least attempted, if not at least hinted towards, was He-Man's choice of um, feline companionship known as Battle Cat, which is this giant green tiger thing that has armor on it and basically rides it into battle. Now, obviously they didn't have the CGI for it back then, but... 
I mean, this is what, 1987? When did Jurassic Park come out? Like, mid-90s? Uh, Jurassic Park was 93, I believe. So, it's not within the realms of difficulties for them to at least create a reasonable concept of a mechanical cat, considering that you had Star Wars in the 70s, and pretty much everything back then was physical props. There was no CGI. Yeah, back then. I mean, even when we were talking about Power Rangers, you remember that scene in Power Rangers in the film where they got the skeleton dinosaurs right after him? I pretty much, I'm sure that when I watched the, like, those were physical effects, but I think they were literally made out of styrofoam. <laughs> but this is it. Like, it's not difficult, but I think a lot of this movie just hung on the lacking of budget. Like, <laughs> they just had to make do with what they had. <laughs> I think like they had really high hopes to make it as grandiose as uh, say like Flash Gordon or something, but by the time they got the cast and they like, paid their bills, they realised they shot themselves in the foot because a lot of the scenes is so shot in the dark, which probably means that the town that they used they had to do it at night time, so they couldn't get in the way of like average folk, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah. I mean <sighs> the. Towards the end of the movie, Skeletor has this bizarre, like, armour. I can't find a picture of it. I will try and edit it in if I can. But, you know, in Thor Ragnarok, you've got Hela, who's got, like, the really weird spiky helmet thing. Yeah, it looks yeah, really yeah. cool. Imagine that, but in gold, okay? That's what Skeletor just randomly adds to himself, because he then gets the powers of the Grey Skull and just basically becomes a bit more flamboyant wears a gold cape and a big gold crown and I have the power and it's just like yeah you don't because within five minutes of that He-Man takes the sword and beats his ass so it's just like what the hell but, oh, God. I mean, the thing is as well is when, they, when the kids come across the cosmic key the first thing that the guy thinks it is is a synthesizer, which is like this Japanese like keyboard slash auto tune device that they had in the sort of late eighties, early nineties, and then he takes it to a music shop, and I don't know how, but in the scope of cosmic logic, there is a port for it to plug into an amp. But I, I know. <laughs> Like it just conveniently has the right port for a amp plug, and then they can literally start playing it and go. <laughs> Good one, the, the look on your face is exactly as exasperation as I felt when I watched this movie. Like, just I don't know what to say about this movie, but I hope when they make. The actual He-Man and the Masters of the Universe movie that comes out next year, they're going to actually attempt at making it something a bit better than this pile of poop. Well, hopefully they have a bigger budget this time. Well, yeah, but then don't forget, like, everything's more expensive these days anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, let's hope so at least. But I just, I can't really fathom as to what can save this movie besides the... It has no redeemable qualities to me. Like, even the costumes as well. Like, even if you, ju even if you just look at the, like, the mask for... Uh, Skeletor. For... Even if you just like the mask and even just like this weird friggin' alien thing that had like a recycled Ewok costume on. Like a really oh. weird mixture of an elf and a, like Yoda and an Ewok. Yeah, see, that's the character that was the one that created the Cosmic Key, which I don't know who that is within He-Man, because when I look back at the original He-Man character list, there is no weird goblin thing, but there is a weird, like, mystic character in a cloak that flies about, but I don't know what his name is. I'm very unsavvy when it comes to He-Man. I remember the reboot, but that only lasted a year if not two at the most. But again, it's just, it's such a weird 
thing he man well, like, yeah, like, remember when you said like there was a well, didn't you say there was like a surprise uh, a surprise casting which you didn't even notice was in there till much later on well yeah i was completely flummoxed by the fact that it had none other than courtney cox in it because never noticed well no this is it like her very first ever acting role wasn't Friends. It was the fact that she was in a Bruce Springsteen music video, Dancing in the Dark. And she got her role from Friends because of being in that. Yeah. But the thing is, is like Dancing in the Dark was a few years before Masters of the Universe. So yeah. the fact that her acting within that movie wasn't sufficient, but her dancing on stage with Bruce Springsteen was... Tells you how bad a movie this is. Yeah, you can tell how much they want to scrub this film from history. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's such a stupid, stupid movie. But it's just after watching like a few, after watching like all the clips and everything, after I saw going online as well, is where like I saw the birth of a lot of the memes as well. Where I was like, oh, now I know where these memes come from now that He Man was. <sighs> it's just. It's, oh, I don't know how to describe this movie. I really don't. I mean, you have Ske Skeletor with a weird freaking mask that just came like for a fiver at the joke shop down the road. <laughs> <laughs> it, to me, it looks like they tried to try and do a face cast, but they forgot to do the mixture right. So it's like a weird, like lumpy effect, if that makes sense. Like, let's see if I can get a decent image of him at, for a moment. I kind of understood like why they were going for like their style choices and for the costumes and everything because there is a point where you kind of want to make things look a bit, I don't know, realistic. But at the same time, this is complete and utter nonsense. So just have fun with it in the real world. It's complete nonsense anyways. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day... When you try and make it too real, it ends up not being real. Try to create some realisticness Oh out my of this goodness. just doesn't add up. Like, I can tell where Daft, Daft Punk got the inspiration for their masks from. Well, the funny thing is, like, I finally realized why the bad guys in all old movies have terrible aim, including Stormtroopers. Well, Lack of vision. <laughs> Look at the vision. Like, uh, these guys are worse than Stormtroopers, and they literally, like, is that how the hell are you supposed to shoot the good guys if you can't friggin' see? Oh, God knows. <laughs> but the thing is, as well, is uh, the helmets look so bizarre. I don't know if that's how they're supposed to be within the whole series itself. But I just, it almost looks like a combination of Pac-Man and pawn pieces like from a chessboard. So that's thrown, just thrown, just bits that are just thrown together to me. It's just the the only thing I will say that they did quite an interesting thing with this movie for special effects, and I think they just did it purely for the sake of adding something different. Was that the blasters from the bad guys was red, the blasters from the good guys was blue. So there was differentiation between the two, so you could tell who was firing. Yeah. Obviously, the good guys had better aim because they didn't have the weird visors. But the thing is, I was trying to watch it and trying to track the shots. I think the guy got quite lazy sometimes because some of it just went so far off, but somehow the bad guy still got shot, and I don't know how. Oh, God knows. Like... <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, what other images can we go through to try and sort of explain how bonkers this movie is uh, let's try and have a look uh, oh here we go so oh Christ so the very end of the movie basically Skeletor climbs out of the pit and basically says something along the lines that he'll be back or whatever because Logic and all that gubbins. But again, what on earth was this shot? Like, let's have a look. Like, why is he green? 
Skeletor. <laughs> like, Skeletor Skeletal is meant to be like a off yellowy white. So it's like, if you haven't brushed your teeth often enough, it's like that sort of off yellow, if that makes sense. It just really reminds me of like those old, do you remember like those grow your own aliens? Do you remember them? Yeah. Like in a, in a little tube. Do you remember them? It looks like that to me. See, to me, it just looks like the mask has just had a really stressful Monday. <laughs> I mean, we all look like that on Monday. <laughs> I don't like Mondays. Um, <laughs> I just, oh, God. Like, I'm trying to fathom what they did with this budget in this movie because the thing is, apparently there was a lot of money that was put into it, but they barely broke even. Well, where did it go? I don't know. I don't even I think... know how much money they even gained back from this film from the box office. I don't know. Here we go. I found a picture of him in his gold form. Bear with us. So you thought that Goldar from Power Rangers was bad. Oh, no. This see, this looks like his like really ugly brother. Good God almighty. But... <laughs> I I don't understand the aesthetic of the the all the different spikes and everything on his head. What's what's it gonna do? The, like, uh, the... It's one of the very few things that actually leaves me just speechless. I have nothing to say. <laughs> no, but I just I'm trying to see what else we can ash these anything from this movie. I'm trying to see if we can save, but. There really isn't much to say from it because it's just so bad. Like it's not even so bad; it's good. The only thing that could save this is if it's if it's like you said, completely redone. But mind you, do you know any of the castings for it though? So the only well, the guy that played He Man for the original one was Dolph Ludgren, but for the new one, let me just have a quick bit of research because there hasn't been much. Because I've just seen loads of rumours on the casting. I just cannot remember who. I can't remember. Uh, let's have a look. No, for the moment, it doesn't seem to be listed on IMDb. So it seems to be either it was just pure rumours or they're just not giving away too much for the moment. But... I would argue it'd be good to bring, uh, who was I saying, the original guy back because he is the right build for He Man. Uh, was it Dolph Ludgren? I mean, I know he is a lot older now, but he is the right build to be He Man. I can't think of anyone in modern day that's like the right physique. Uh, I don't know. Maybe around if he's around the same age, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. I'll it's be just back, like... wrong film. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, as well, is like he'd have to have long blonde hair and like, like that bowl just... cut. Oh god, just I don't think it would work. Like, not to be harsh, but it's just Arnie with anything that's more than an army haircut just doesn't look right, and I don't know why. No, I get what you mean. But I mean, I don't know who even owns the right to, the rights to He Man because I thought it was Marvel. But then there has been so many different companies over the years that have done comics and TV shows that I think it's just pretty much anyone who's willing to make a go of it will go for it. Yeah, but you can see why nobody's wanted to have a go at it so far. <sighs> I mean, at least I hope when it comes to the newer version that they try to go a bit more in depth of what the point of He-Man is. It's not just purely a big muscle-bone guy that saves the universe. Like, there's Prince Adam, there's Eternia, there's the whole, like, idea that he has to become worthy. Kind of like Thor, but a bit more cosmic. Because Thor for the MCU for the first two movies wasn't overly cosmic, was it? Not really, no. I mean, the third one slowly saved itself, but we have just got our fingers and toes crossed for the fourth movie because, you know. But 
I don't know what else to add to this, really. It's a shame our stream cut out on us the other day because I had so many good points and I completely forgotten them all. So <laughs> Yeah, because it's... back then, folks, we were doing the stream, it, everything was all going well until Ben started to sound like he was gargling tinfoil. <laughs> and Jank sounded like he was trying to impersonate R2-D2. I mean, right, I love it. I love it. <laughs> but that's... A short and sweet episode for this week. Uh, the next episode should hopefully be Sunday this week, which will be Jack's topic. So, dude, what's your topic for Sunday? Well, for once, we actually have a blooming long list of things, and it's just hard to pick between any. It's hard to pick between any of them. But there's a point where I might want to talk about something next week. Obviously, this can be subject to change, but hopefully, in Ben's TikToks, Instagram. Hopefully we'll get a better idea. But I either want to talk about how we could bring in Galactus, Galactus properly, which mm -hmm. I would love to have a go at that because it would be a bloody game changer. But it's something which has to be done properly. And I think we can have a decent go. And I don't mean the Galactus that we got in the bloody Silver Surfer, not that nonsense. <laughs> No, we are not going back to the Nanite store. We are having the proper Galactus this time. I have a feeling he's on his way to the MCU, but it's going to be a bit of a fiddly ride to try and make it all fit in because for the most part of the MCU, it's tried to be realistic. And then after, what, phase three, if not phase two, it slowly just went... <coughs> yeah, And just much. every... Everything comic booky just exploded at once. So, yeah, although we do have like some ideas for the casting for Galactus for the voice, mm -hmm. which will have which you'll have to wait till the weekend. <laughs> yeah. So, thanks again for joining. What is part two of this attempt? And again, stay safe, stay home. Have a look at our socials down in the description down below, and see you all soon. Lady, y'all. <laughs>